Hey guys, so we are going to do, um, I think it's a tag, it's the things that I would do differently with my pregnancy slash, um, I may have added with a newborn, <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I think I have five for each, um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So number one is I would take prenatals, um, regularly. I did take them but there was several days that I would forget to take them and um, especially because I generally have low iron um, so it's really important that I take those it makes they made me feel better when I would remember them um, so I would definitely um, make more of an effort to do that every single day um, number two is um, I would be more active and eat better. <laughs> um, a lot of these go along with my health. Um, I had a lot of cravings for sweets when I was pregnant with him, and I gave in to them a lot. <laughs> and um, so I would, you know, just not only eat better foods, but be on a more regular schedule um, instead of just eating sporadically all the time. Um, <laughs> and do more meals. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and be more active. When I got pregnant, I kind of used it as an excuse to not do anything after that. Um, and so I don't know if that was why I gained as much as I did, probably, um, but I would definitely make an effort to um, be more active. Okay, um, so yeah, being more active, you know, just like even, you know, going on walks daily. Um, of course, now with him, I, well, I am more active than I was. Also, since his room is upstairs now, I'm upstairs a lot. I have to go up and down the stairs a lot each day. Um, but yeah, so just um, a lot more healthier overall. And going with that, um, number three is drink more water. I had terrible swelling almost my entire pregnancy to where at the end of it I was actually on bed rest um, to make the swelling go down. So um, I definitely want to make an effort to drink, you know, much, much, much more water. Um, I really, I don't like, I don't drink much during the day anyways, um, but water is definitely not my favorite thing to drink. Um, but it is very important, especially for me, because I've seen how, um, how much I can swell to the point of where, like, I couldn't wear shoes, like, it was bad. <laughs> um, so that is definitely important, uh, for me next time around. Um, number four is, um, I would make sure that my battery, um, or that my camera batteries are charged. We got to, um, after the C-section, my husband had the camera and he went to take pictures and the batteries were dead. I charged them if, like a week to two weeks earlier and just had them in my bag, but I guess just from sitting, it drained the battery, either that or the camera got turned on by accident in the bag or whatever, my hospital bag, um, and the batteries were completely dead. So the only pictures that we got... Uh, we didn't get any like right in the room where I had the C-section and then we got a couple with my husband's cell phone and my mom's cell phone, but that's all the pictures that we had um, for the most part, uh, I think while we were at the hospital, I think I did get to charge my camera like after day two or something, but um, I was really disappointed with that. So that's one thing that I will make sure that I charge like... <sighs> I don't know. Well, the problem is I was in labor for 32 hours, so I could have been charging it at that point, but I didn't know that the batteries were dead. So I guess when I go into labor, I'll check the batteries, or somebody else will, because that's probably not going to be on my priority list. Number five is to not have hospital visitors. Um, as soon as... Well, obviously, like, my, my mom was there, and then my husband's family was there, and that was fine, but, um, you know, we had people from church that came and visited us in the hospital, and it just, I, I don't want to have to worry about that um, next time around, you know, 
after we're in, out of the hospital, it's fine, but I really like having to schedule, cause, especially because um, Harold was in the NICU, so we were over there a lot, and so people had to call ahead, and then we would, when they got there, of course, they wanted to see the baby, so we would have to go to the NICU, and you know, which wasn't a huge deal, but when I was, you know, recovering, having to get up and down, and of course, I didn't have to go over there, but if, I mean, I wanted to be there when somebody saw my baby, so... Um, so yeah, I would, you know, have my husband, because I wouldn't be able to do it, ask people to wait till after we were out of the hospital to come visit us. Um, and then next for things that I would do differently um, with an infant would be, um, first would be take pictures, video, and journal from the very beginning. Um, again, with the photos, you know, in the hospital to, um, I didn't get very many the first month. Um, and so, you know, I can't take that back. I can't go get more pictures. And, um, just, you know, I started a journal for him for the first year of his life. And I didn't start that right away. Um, same with videos. You know, I just want to start, like, once they're born. Whoever is next. <laughs> once they're born. So I don't have to regret that later. Um, number two is... Um, try harder to get them to sleep on their back. Harold, for the first two weeks, wouldn't sleep if he wasn't being held. So we would hold him like on our stomachs or whatever and he would sleep. Um, we'd lay on the recliner and he'd sleep on my stomach while I slept, which is not good. Um, but he wouldn't sleep any other way. And when we finally did put him down, he would not sleep on his back. He, even if he was swaddled, he wouldn't sleep on his back. So we ended up having to put him on his tummy like for when he was really, really little. And I was nervous about it, but that was the only way I could get him to sleep. So um, I feel like if I would have pushed it a little more, for one, not letting him sleep on us for the first like two to three weeks um, and, you know, didn't give in so quickly when he would get fussy and not sleep, um, I want to make more of an effort if the next baby is similar. Um, to get them to sleep on their back. Um, number three is make sure he or she is around other people um, from the very beginning. Harold got separation anxiety very early. Um, they're not supposed to get it I think until like five or six months at earliest. Um, but he was showing signs of separation anxiety three to four months. I would say four months old. Um, to where you know if I wasn't holding him he would be crying. Um, just in time to discuss his separation anxiety. Um, but yeah, to the point where if I wasn't holding him, then he would be fussy. Um, he didn't do well in the nursery. Um, he didn't do well like at his grandparents' house. Um, none of that. So um, it was challenging because, you know, I want him to be happy as much as possible. And... Um, I want him to be able to be in the environment of being held by somebody else or, you know, staying with his grandparents. Um, so we did work on it. And um, when I went to Florida for um, two weeks, he did, got a lot better because um, I was staying with my parents and my brother and sister lived there. So there was a lot of people around as well as we went to a bunch of their church activities and stuff like that. So he was around a lot of people for almost the entire time, or I guess for the entire time. Um, so when we got back, he, um, it's a lot easier to leave him with people. Um, he's better if I'm not there, like if he can't see me. If he can see me, then unless he's in a really happy mood, he really doesn't want anybody else to hold him other than his dad. Um, but if I'm not visible, then he's fine with other people. Um, so he's, like I said, he's definitely gotten a ton better. Um, number four, what's number four, Bubby? Do not feed, um, oh, do not feed him if he's not hungry, especially at night, mainly at night. Um, when he was first born, of course, you know, he is my first, so, um, I was discovering all of the things that I didn't know about newborns, um, you know, and learning his feeding cues and all of that, um, and at night when he would fuss, I would just automatically, you know, feed him because I was exhausted. It happened so frequently. Um, 
that I just wanted him to go back to sleep and that would get him to go back to sleep right away. Well, he wasn't necessarily hungry. He just would wake up because that's what babies do. And, you know, I would let him cry for a little bit, but he wouldn't go back to sleep. But once, once I discovered that he wasn't... Why are you pinching me? Why are you pinching me? Once I discovered that he wasn't actually hungry, that he just, you know, wanted some attention, um, I would just pat his back and at that point roll him back over, pat his back, and he would go back to sleep. Um, and eventually he stopped waking up so frequently. So if I would have done that sooner, then I would have gotten more sleep sooner. Um, Huh, buddy? Yeah. And then number five is introduce a flexible schedule before five months. We are battling with his schedule right now. Um, he was on a pretty good schedule from about five to six months. <laughs> not a very long time. Um, but we finally got it down, and then he had a growth spurt, and then we went to Florida, and we have not gotten it back. So. <laughs> um... And so we're currently working on it. Um, he's, I don't know, he's all out of whack. But I feel like if I would have introduced not a structured, like, you have to do this that now, you have to do this now, you have to do this now, but something flexible, you know, like, um, even as far as, you know, you eat, you sleep, and then you play. You eat, you sleep, and then you play. You eat, you sleep, then you play. Like, something like that, um, you know, or you eat every three hours, give or take 30 minutes, you know, just something, some kind of schedule, um, earlier than five months, um, I think that it would have really helped him out a lot sooner, um, because it did take him a long time to sleep through the night, which again, was a lot, because I would just feed him, so he would wake up, and I'd feed him, and then he'd, you know, wake up to eat, because... He wasn't hungry, but he, it was, you know, it was comforting to him, but he didn't need to eat. So once I stopped feeding him at those feedings, he stopped waking up. Um, so, yeah, but those are things that I would do differently, or at least I think I would do differently. I would try to. Um, but if you have not done this tag and would like to, um, go ahead and do it and then let me know. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. Bye.